G'day and welcome to the complete guide for the false sun and risk of rain 2. Now, you're probably going to get sick of me saying this, but I really wanted to clarify this game as a current patch on the 31st of August 2024 is a buggy mess and I do not recommend downloading the update or buying the DLC until these issues are resolved. But I did a poll on YouTube explaining my issues with making guides despite this and it was overwhelmingly in favour of making guides anyway. And since I'm a man of the people, I still wanted to make this, so here you are. Alright, let's dive into the False Sun's ability, starting with his passive Lunar Tampering. Now, you might want to rewatch this explanation a couple of times, because it is a little bit unintuitive. So, Lunar Tampering works in combination with his secondary ability called Lunar Spikes, which, like it sounds, shoots out spikes. Now, if you have any Lunar Spikes unused, every spike will give you plus 5% attack speed and plus 2.5% armor. And every used spike will give you plus 5% movement speed and plus 2.5% health regeneration. You keeping up so far? It gets more confusing later, trust me. But essentially, it is a very fun mechanic where you are semi-stance swapping to either be tankier and stronger or faster and heal more. Very unique and I actually love it. A very rare moment for me in this DLC. Alrighty, False Sun's primary is called Club of the Forsaken. That is exactly what it sounds like. It's a a big club. <laughs> it swings slow but deals 300% damage, but the real use of this comes from its second phase, which allows you to hold the primary and secondary buttons simultaneously and it charges up a big overhead slam that when fully charged deals 1500% damage. And there's a decent bit of AoE as well. I honestly very scarcely use the M1 normally. I almost exclusively use the slam. It is pretty strong. Okay, moving on to False Sun Secondary. And as we said earlier, this is called Lunar Spikes. And this is what synergizes with his passive ability. This throws out a spike that deals 150% damage and adds a debuff that makes any enemy take 10% stacking damage. So it's honestly a great ability rotation combo that I find pretty fun to use. Now, this is where it gets a little more complicated. This ability is affected by what is called growth. Growth is a mechanic where the higher your health gets due to health related items, so not including leveling up, the more spikes you will get, which means that your passive ability effects will get even stronger. So the more health you have from items will lead to you either being tankier and attacking faster, or being faster moving and regening health faster. A little convoluted, but a very, very interesting way to play around and actually makes Bison Steak useful for once. Okay, False Sun's utility is called Step of the Brothers. This is a dash that can go in any direction. So think basically Mercenary Dash or Hunter's Single Blink. You have two dashes on cooldown and deals 200% damage to every enemy hit. Honestly, not very strong, but mainly just use of mobility. But in saying that, still nice to throw in your ability rotations. And after having the complications of Lunar Spikes and Growth Mechanics, it's nice just to have a simple dash to throw into the mix as well, honestly. <laughs> okay, his special abilities are where we finally have a choice. Well, we kind of have a choice. You'll, you'll understand in a second. False Sun has two special abilities, Laser of the Father and Laser Burst. Laser of the Father is a charged attack that fires a rapidly hitting laser that deals 30 to 175% damage and refills your Lunar Spikes. Your Lunar Spikes being what affects your passive abilities again, right? And it's affected by the growth mechanic as well. So the more health related items you have, the longer it fires. Laser Burst, however, fires a single laser for 1000% damage, pierces and refills 30% of your Lunar Spikes. And your uses of this also increase with the growth mechanic. Now, Layers of the Father is the easy choice here for two reasons, and unfortunately, both these reasons are currently because of bugs. The Laser Burst Pierce ability doesn't pierce. <laughs> so it's kind of an issue. So there's that, and there's currently a bug where if you just simply hold down the button you use to shoot your Laser of the Father ability, after you shoot it for the first time, it'll literally shoot forever. So you just hold R, after you press R, and it will shoot infinitely. <laughs> if it wasn't for these two things, I can see them both being super interchangeable, but for right now, there's clearly one choice. A single shot fire that does no pierce, or a literal infinite laser. <laughs> it's not a hard choice. Alright, so we've got the abilities under wraps. Let's delve into the playstyle of the False Sun. He honestly reminds me a bit of Akron and Mercenary, in the sense that you can stay super close up with your charged primary attack and the laser shots, but you're going to want to fall back on more ranged attacks as the stages increase. Also, as cool as the synergies with his special and his secondaries growing off each other is, and the way it affects your stats, the spikes do shoot out annoyingly slow, so attack speed will be your best friend. That, and your laser charges up faster with attack speed too, so a lot of your damage will drastically be increased with some of that attack speed. That and given the rapid attack speed of Laser of the Father, proc items will be your best friend. It doesn't have a huge proc coefficient, but that's easily overcome by the pure amount of hits it deals out. In saying that, Plasma Trip obviously fires every hit, so that is the absolute GOAT for this guy. But similar to Seeker, and honestly for all the new DLC survivors, the key comes in cycling through your abilities. 
If you purely rely on one ability, you are absolutely going to be feeling weak. So get in close with the M1, hit him with a charge attack, dash out, throw your spikes and charge up a laser attack and rinse and repeat. Or just hold R and shoot your laser forever. Now, let's move on to the tier list, the thing that I know most people are waiting for. I'm gonna be doing this in two separate sections of DLC and non-DLC items. Partially because I wanna delve deeper into the DLC items placements, but mainly because the new tier lists haven't been made yet, and I am not doing that myself. But alas, the tier list. So F tier already has some weird choices that definitely aren't normally here. Hooks, Purity, Lysate, and Ruin are genuinely amazing items depending on the survivor, but a false sun, you absolutely do not want them. If you replace your secondary and your special, you may as well reset the run, as these are the bread and butter of your power creep for the false sun. And given that your skills all have a fast cooldown and you can shoot your laser infinitely, then purity is just a straight up nerf. Same reason my Lysate is here too. Why would I want to corrupt my fuel cells to get more use of my infinitely firing attack? Now, if this gets patched out, then Lysate absolutely moves up to A tier, but as of right now, it's just a waste of an item. All right, D tier and C tier. I'm combining both these tiers because they are both so underwhelming and almost irrelevant. Nine times out of 10, you're just scrapping these and sending them into a speed or watch printer. Given C tier generally has more use than D tier, but again, nine times out of 10, they're all just scrap anyway. All right, moving up to the good stuff of B tier now. This is where we start to delve into our power creep and survivability. A huge special note goes to Bison Steak here. You will literally never see this this high ever again, as it is the scrappiest of scrap items. But for the growth mechanic of False Sun, it's actually pretty useful. Just be careful around scrappers because muscle memory will kick in and you will accidentally scrap it. I have unfortunately done it more than once. Personal shield generators also aren't normally quite this high, but as shield counts as health, then this creeps up just one tier for me of this false sun. And guillotine also does not belong this high normally. But given that elites are nearly twice as common in the current patch, then they are pretty useful. Very rare for me to say, but they actually have a use. If they patch this out, then send those guys straight back down to D tier. Alrighty, A tier. These are the items that you see and you must pick up. They are the fast track to your run going from struggle to a breeze. Special mention of both infusion and pearl being way higher than they usually are, but again, Specifically, just for false sun. The more health, the stronger you are, and these do an amazing job of exactly that. And one of the biggest downsides of the false sun is his M1 being a bit mediocre. So if you can swap that out for a long range primary with visions of heresy, then you are really, really set. Big, big props to visions here. I never really like it, but I really, really like it on the false sun. And finally, S tier, the king of all items, a secret to essentially every single run and risk of rain too. Mobility, damage, and damage reduction the three keys to success. There's no special cases in this tier, but every single item makes my eyes light up every time I see it drop, especially in the DLC with this more diluted pool of items too. Pick up these items. These will make you win runs. Okay, moving on to the DLC items now. In F tier, we have the Lonely Unstable Transmitter. I know this works well with NG Taras, but holy hell, I do not want an item that randomly TPs me around the map. One of the biggest keys to surviving in Risky Rain 2 is always knowing your surroundings. So getting put in a random place, especially in a new DLC where you don't know where you are, is something I never, ever want. This item is terrible. It is the scrappiest of scrappy green items. I will always scrap it when I get the chance. Or just leave it on the ground sometimes. Like Honestly, I'll just leave it on the ground. I don't want it. I do not want it. In D tier, we start off with a knockback fin. Why do I ever want enemies to be slightly higher off the ground? That is the weirdest. Unless I have a thousand stacks of it, I do not want the knockback fin. It still confuses me why it's in the game. The antler shield, bolstering lantern, and noxious thorns, which require me to take damage to deal damage, which is always a terrible idea in Risk of Rain 2. And the war bond, the red that works as three gauze tome drops once a stage. Cool. Uh, why is that a red? Oh, and apparently long standing shot is just straight dookie. I've never touched it. Honestly, don't plan to. I got yelled at in the seeker guide for having it higher than this. So my apologies. I brought it right down to where it belongs. In C tier, we have the Warped Echo. And looking past the fact that in current patch, you can make Mythics literally unkillable. It is still an interesting thing to play around with the Pulsion Armor Plates since they get affected twice. On that same coin, they do suck with Opals, unfortunately. So, you know, you gotta take one or the other there. Luminous Shock can come into play since you do spam the M2 so much, but still not that exciting. Prayer Beads are a nice little boost, but I still feel pretty underwhelming about them. And Growth Nectar, again, can be really, really good but it's just inconsistent to get going. And Runic Lens is the most inconsistent proc item in the game. But when it hits, it hits. But it just doesn't hit. Or when it does hit, they're already dead. <laughs> 
It's such a weird item, dude. The runic lens. Anyway. Okay. B tier has us with the chronic expansion, which by itself is okay if you are constantly fighting and insanely good with an FMP build, granting you literally infinite damage, but good luck getting the proper FMP build. Chance Doll can turn reds into yellows out of Chance Shrines, but it's pretty rare, of course. And Electric Boomerang is a nice addition of extra damage, but a little lackluster, but still nice to add to the proc chains. Alrighty. A tier. Sail Star is an amazing item macro item. It doubles the first chest you open per stage, and yes, that includes legendary chests. The only issue is remembering that you have it. <laughs> that, that's a skill issue. I have wasted it on a healing chest like three or four times already and drives me crazy. And the Seed of Life is a Dio's as an equipment. That one explains itself. Obviously very, very good. And sitting pretty alone at the top in S tier is the Sonorous Whispers. This item makes boss tier enemies drop an item on kill. Note that I said boss tier enemies and not just TP bosses. So a randomly spawning Titan later in the run will always drop an item. And it has a 15% chance for an elite to drop an item too. This item is insane and essentially activates sacrifice in a normal run. Big, big S tier energy. This red is insane. But that's it. That's the complete guide for False Sun and Risk of Rain 2. And of course, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Did I miss something? Do you think I'm a moron? <laughs> you can tell me. I'm used to it. Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you like the content, then make sure to subscribe. It means a lot to me and genuinely helps me out a bunch. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. Love you lots. Bye-bye.